And there were two or three times where I walked into church and I felt the heat of, of the Holy Spirit and I walked. But for some reason, I couldn't retain it. I, I couldn't understand. Lord, I, you just healed me, but why am I sick again? I began to feel uh, helpless. The frustration of not being able to fix something when you're a fix-it guy. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis more than 20 years ago. At that time, I had paralysis of my left side and vision loss in my left eye. Years went by, I would have some symptoms. Some would come, they would go. It was only about nine years ago when I moved to Florida where it really hit me really bad. I was still working, but half of the times I couldn't walk. I couldn't drive. So I would say every six weeks, I was um, admitted into the hospital. I was given um, salumedrol, which is a steroid, for about four or five days. At that point, it would make me a little stronger. Um, and then I would try to function again, go to work, take care of my baby. Uh, six weeks later, here we go again. This was the, um, the salumedrol, which is a steroid that was given to me um, every other month. Um, I used to go to the hospital, and if I didn't go to the hospital, then they used to send me a nurse to administer the steroids here at home, and she used to come two, three days sometimes. And they used to put a port, and the port would stay in my arm, and then they would administer the steroids until it was done. Three to four days, it depended on how long the doctor would order it for. It came to a point where I had to throw the towel in. The doctor said, you can't work anymore. I couldn't walk at that point. I couldn't use my arms. I couldn't swallow. Um, I had incontinence. Uh, I had numbing all over my body. Um, and I had pain all over my body. I would get muscle spasms, even in my face, in my back, in my arms, and my legs. Um, I had an inability to speak. Uh, I had cognitive problems. I just had it all. I remember at one point, and I had a little girl that I had to take care of. Um, praise God that I had my family, I had my mother who helped me. But I remember trying to take care of my daughter and uh, crawling on the floor because my legs could not hold me up. I just could not do anything. I couldn't take care of her, I couldn't cook. I, I could barely take care of myself, put on a pair of socks, get dressed, um, write a check out. I'd go to call my mother and I couldn't remember who I was calling, what number I was calling. Um, I couldn't drive. So it was basically just home. When I was little, of course, I didn't understand what was going on. I, all I knew that was that my mom was sick. It was really hard for me to see her like that because, of course, I understood what sickness was and that she wasn't well and she couldn't walk sometimes and I had to call the ambulance for her once because she couldn't breathe. I had control of nothing. My arms, my legs, I had no control. So I was in a wheelchair half of the times. I was walking with a cane. I had to use a walker. I couldn't drive on my own. I needed somebody to go with me everywhere I went. I, I couldn't be independent anymore. I mean, it hurt my heart. It broke my heart to see her suffer each day. And when my grandma came to pick me up, I would always worry. I would have anxiety attacks because I didn't know where my mom was. Each day I felt like I could wake up and my mom would be gone. It was just really hard for me. I began to feel uh, helpless. The frustration of not being able to fix something when you're a fix-it guy. You're the kind of person that, you know, okay, you see a problem, bam, you're on it. You want to fix it. This, all I could do is see and all I could do is hear what she was going through. And that gave me a great deal of um, frustration and um, 
anxiety, but not, but not being able to help her with that. So I felt powerless. I don't care what you see. I know I'm healed. That's all I kept saying. By his stripes I am healed. And I kept hanging on to that. Hanging on to that, no matter how bad it got. Every time I was in the hospital, I, whoever could hear me, it's okay, I'm gonna walk again. And I had times where the Lord actually spoke to me and gave me scripture. He gave me Acts 3, where I couldn't walk. And I walked again. And there were two or three times where I walked into church and I felt the heat of, of the Holy Spirit. And I walked. But for some reason, I couldn't retain it. I, I couldn't understand. Lord, I, you just healed me, but why am I sick again? Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Do I have to do something different? And that night, I had seen Andrew Womack before, and I used to wonder, who is this man? Why is he speaking that way? Hmm. But that night, as I was gonna shut the TV off, he was staring straight at me, and he said to me, what you're doing wrong is that you're not praying right. You need to pray differently. But let me just put it to you this way. If what you're doing isn't working, why is it that you are so adamant about holding on to the concepts that aren't working for you? I'm just asking you to open up your heart just a little bit to consider that maybe there's a better way to pray, to consider that maybe some of the foundational things that you've been believing about prayer are wrong, and just open up the door just to crack so that if there is something wrong, that we could make a scriptural adjustment here and that it could help us in our prayer life. And that was my answered prayer. The Lord was speaking right, right through Andrew. The first time I heard Andrew preach um, the, on the Gospel of Truth program, to tell you the truth, prior to that, I was scanning the channels and I saw him and I would catch him, but he didn't really grab my attention because he just sat still and was kind of not necessarily monotone. It wasn't that boring, but it wasn't a stimulating visual experience as you would expect on television to capture your attention as we are accustomed to. So it was a different kind of programming, uh, visually speaking. The message, it took a while for me to get over the visual to allow the message to enter in. Once I allowed that to sink in, that's what had me hooked. And that's because it was the truth. I watch Andrew every day. There's not one day where I miss, and I just started applying those principles from the Word. And my life has just started changing. From the beginning she started watching Andrew Womack till this day, I, could, I just saw her, her feature, her facial features and the way she acts. It's just amazing what God has done in her. She, he's totally renewed her and she, she's not sick anymore. My healing wasn't instant. It was progressive. It was a gradual healing. Um, I don't know if it was because of my belief. Well, actually, I think it is because I wasn't taught. I wasn't taught the right way. I was coming from a different doctrine. Um, I was being taught by my pastor. But when Andrew put it so clearly, that's what freed me. That's what freed me. And then as the more I learned, the more I applied the word, then the healing, healing will come, the healing will come, just gradually, gradually. And that was okay for me because I knew that I was healed. You know, whether it came instantly or not, I knew I was healed and no one was gonna change that. She knows that God does not want her ill. She totally believes that God has already healed her. So when symptoms come up in her body, 
right away, she is speaking to the specific symptom. And in the name of Jesus, that symptom evaporates almost instantaneously, if not right on the spot. I mean, she just speaks to it and her faith is to receive that healing right then. God has already done His part. We aren't waiting on God to answer our prayer. God has anticipated every problem that you'll ever have through Jesus. He sent Jesus here. Jesus paid for the forgiveness of your sins. He healed all of your diseases. He delivered you from all of the oppression. He's already provided whatever it is that you need before you even existed. The Lord anticipated your problem and made the supply before you ever had the need. Everything that God is ever going to do has already been done through Jesus. He put this same power that He used raising Jesus from the dead inside of you. It's resident in you. And now, instead of approaching God as a great beggar and saying, Oh God, we are powerless. We have nothing. We are just looking to you. Please move. Pour out your power. Oh God, heal. Oh God, deliver. Which is the way most people are praying. Instead, we are supposed to come and say, Father, thank you that in Christ everything I need has already been provided. You've given me this authority. And so now you take your authority and you speak to your mountain, Matthew, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. You speak to the problem. Don't talk to God about your problem, but talk to your problem about God. Take your authority. Speak and command things to respond. Command the power of God to flow. And see, if you start taking that authority and using it that way, you're going to see different results. I don't need anything. I have the power of God in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Any little thing, I just rebuke it in Jesus' name and it has to leave, and it does leave. Andrew Womack said, you know what, you have to be a fanatic. Well, you know what, I am a fanatic. And that's the way I'm going to live my life, a fanatic for Jesus.